I remember one day sitting, I had pulled up on the side, on the side street right off of Dango. And I was sitting in my car and I was eating. And I didn't want to get out of my car. I was just on some lazy shit, You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there and I'm chilling and I'm eating. But you know when you sitting somewhere, you pay attention to everything that moves. So I see this like this SWAT. This like this SWAT being pull up. You know what I'm saying? With all these police and jumping out of it. Like literally. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, damn, I'm like somebody crib getting raided. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at it. I'm eating, looking at it. I'm entertained. Then I see another one. You know what I'm saying? A couple of like, uh, maybe like a block down from that one. And the same shit going on. I'm like, damn, what the fuck that got going on? Never in a million years, I promise you. Never in a million years would I ever think the motherfucker was looking for me. I'm Cecilia Robinson. This is Bricks of an Empire. I went to prison for a corrupt organization, access device fraud, conspiracy, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And now I'm turning my life around. My movie is a book that I wrote when I was in prison. I'm trying to get it on the big screen, and I want to see how far I can go with it. I'm freshly out of my contract of a publishing deal that I've had for over 10 years. So I have three new books that I'm trying to get out now to the public, and I feel like I'm running out of time. This show is talking about me and my struggles and my rise to fame since I've been released from prison. Through all of this, I'm trying to find somebody that I can build my empire with. But I'm recently out the closet and I love women just as much as I love men. So I want to see how this is going to go and if that's going to work for me. My relationship with my children, that's another thing. I love my girls so much. You guys will get to see how I interact with them. A lot of you guys follow me on social media, so you know that I am a very complex person, very outspoken. Well, being outspoken don't always work for me all the time, so you're going to get a chance to see some of the situations that my mouth has gotten me into. Pretty much every day my life is a movie. I just want y'all to stay tuned and keep watching. Once again, I am Cecilia Robinson, and this is Bricks of an Empire. phone call like CC you can't go home I say what in 1,000 feet turn no right the, the initial Avenue. statement wasn't CC you can't go home and CC where your kids at and I'm like where my kids at and I'm looking at the time like shit my kids in school like you need to get on my crib or something mm -hmm. so he was like CC find out where your kids at and hang up the phone like that's the scariest shit for somebody to ever say to a parent right. you know what I'm saying where are your children when you know when you where you think you know where your children are. And so I'm calling my kids phone like like a psychopath. <laughs> I'm calling their phones, calling their phones, and it's like, come on, dumbass. They in school. They can't, they're not allowed to have they they phones. So I call the schools and I ask the the office attendant was my children in in attendance that day. And they tell me like, yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? So I call my people back. I say, my kids in school, what's up? They say, they got them. You can't go home. CC, you can't go home. I said, the fuck you mean? I can't go home. Like, my kids is at home. My kids will be at home. Like, CC, get your kids to meet you in New York. You know what I'm saying? Because if you go home, they're going to get you. Like, them people hit this morning. They got, they got, God boy. And they looking for you. The phones are tapped. Get rid of them. Now, when I'm having this conversation, there's two more people in the car with me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on the phone, but I'm looking at them and they face is like flushed. It's like ghosts. <laughs> and we sitting at the fucking airport. <laughs> you should have seen us getting up out the cars. You should have seen us in Walmart dumping phones. <laughs> <laughs> the people at Walmart are like, what the fuck? I'm talking about we breaking phones in Walmart, trying to get rid of everything. And the only thing I could think of was to hit my folks up in Chicago like, yo, it's time. Like, pull everything out the bank. You know what I'm saying? Pull everything out the bank. Like, they own me. Y'all got to get my kids. You know what I'm saying? You got to get to my kids. I can't go to my kids.
So I'm out here in Philly and I want to get with a couple of friends. But I cannot step foot in Philly without seeing Jimmy the Saint. Jimmy the Saint is like up there with one of the American gangsters. He's like one of my idols, you know? Jimmy has a lot of stuff going on in the city with the movies, the books, the Philly Hip Hop Awards. He got his head into some of everything. So that's one of the people I wanted to see. Plus we've been friends for some years and I ain't seen him since I got out of prison. I met CC a few years ago. She was uh, hanging with a female friend of mine who was also a book author from out of Philly. And CC busted up. You know, I liked her vibe, real nice personality. She had that hustler's ambition. She was really, really dedicated to uh, succeed. You know what I'm saying? And I felt that it was, it was both on the same path. I mean, but then, um, I should know, though she uh, reached out to me, called me from out of Chicago, and was like, Jim, I need you. I'm about to. Uh, shoot my reality series and um, I need you on board. I told her whatever she want, just holler at me up here. She came to Philly and eat me you know. And I treated her over at Max's, we got something to eat. We sat and talked about some potential business, doing stuff together and everything. So I end up meeting Jimmy and Max. You know, Max is this world famous for the Philly cheese steaks. Creek was shot there. Um, it's the heart of Philly, so everybody knows this location is. How about the guy that's Chicago? Shot Town. Yeah. You know about the uh, 100s out there? Gangsta. Those 100s, the gangsta. Shot Town. Chicago. World's best cheesesteak, D-Banks top chef. Salute y'all. Chicago in the house. He was like so amazing. He showed me so much love. He said, hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Give me the food. Thanks, extra excited. He just like the move so much more. You know what I'm saying? He made my food with love. So we up in there and we talking about some, you know, some old business and some new business. Pretty much I won't. Jimmy to advise me on how I should move with this movie. You know what I'm saying? What's the best places in Philly that I should be filming? I'm out here pretty much getting everything together for the movie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I got any text? I got a few, but I feel like I'm going to read the What? The people I met was good, but just not good enough. A CC came to me for some advice. I gave her some advice and I told her anything she needs as far as health movie aspirations, I can really cover. So uh, we've been vibing, so that's why we're sitting at Max just talking about some real stuff that we can um, put together. And hopefully she reach her dream, man. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I mean, you can see the drive and the ambition in her. Like I said, I expect that. And if she needs my help with movies, her reality series, or whatever she's trying to do, she, um, she got 100%. And who walks back? Or Rob, the guy from Free One and Two. So I was excited about that throwing. Oh, say what? Hey, baby. We work here. You know, the Creed, you walk last night. They know. Oh, yeah. They Creed, the movie. Oh, yeah. Cool, nothing Me leaving Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? I had like a blanket of security wrapped around me because I know if I ever need anything, I can always call on this man. And that's such a good feeling to have. Nowadays, I don't know who to trust. But Jimmy is one of the ones I can't trust. It was a really, really good meeting, you know what I mean? Um, good meeting from uh, the whole vibe, you know what I mean? The people at Max's were treating us nice, you know what I'm saying? CCM, one of their favorite cheese steaks and stuff like that. But it was a good vibe, and um, and um, it went well. Like I said, I'm just looking forward to 2020 when she dropped all her projects, and we just make it happen, man, you know what I'm saying? 2020, man, that's, you see straight, 2020, that's the year, man, for a lot of people, dreams to come true. Four feet, you know what I'm saying? Right. She said, I can see, I didn't have no curtains. 
she say the police was sitting outside. She said, you know, we from Chicago. We can tell the detectives and shit. They sitting outside in a a, a, a truck with tinted windows, but you can see the computer. I say, shit. And she say, that same truck followed us this morning when I was taking my sister to school. I say, nah, nah, I say, I can't come to y'all. You know what I'm saying? I say, I can't come to y'all. I say, get your sisters. And I say, you gonna have to meet me in New York. You gonna have to meet me in New York. And she was like, okay. And at this point in time, she like 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't allow her to buy a ticket to go to New York. So I had met a nigga initially. Listen to this. I met a nigga um, on my way to Philly. This before all this had happened. My, my initial first trip to Philly, I met a nigga on the Greyhound. You know what I'm saying? Cool as shit. He was just coming home. Cool as shit. That was the only nigga I really had contact with out there. But it was like in passing. You know what I'm saying? And matter of fact, we gonna see him today. <laughs> I tell, I call him. I say, yo. I say some shit happened. I say I need you to get my kids. Like that's brand. That's the only person I can rely on. You know what I'm saying? And this was just, I didn't have a choice. So I'm like, I need you to get my kids. I need you to hold my kids until somebody gets to them. You know what I'm saying? Now, mind you, this nigga done got back to doing whatever he doing, so he really can't move like that. Right. But my kids, he got my kids. He held on to them until he couldn't hold on to them no more. You know what I'm saying? And then when it got tiresome to my oldest daughter being with this stranger, and she telling me, I tell her, I say, no, nah, no, nah. I said, look, just go home. Now, on the other side, I'm getting, I done told my people what happened. He's making arrangements. They are making arrangements to come out. You know what I'm saying? They making a plan to get my fucking kids up out of Philly. So they got to book all these flights and all this other shit and all this other stuff. It, it was it was crazy. Long story short, I tell my daughters, I say, y'all go home and I act like nothing happened. I say, pack whatever y'all can. And in the morning, leave out and go to school like nothing happened. Have y'all bags by the door and somebody will be there to get y'all. I said, I promise you that. I said, I can't come to y'all, but I love y'all. Now, before I had ended up going to Boston, I had been in Memphis for a month. You know what I'm saying? I had only been home seven hours before I had to go to Boston. I hadn't seen my children in a whole month. You know what I'm saying? I hadn't seen my kids in a whole month. So, before I walked out the door, I threw $4,000. I threw $4,000 on a bathroom counter. And I had told my daughter, I said, y'all go get y'all hair done or something. You know, go out. I said, I'll be back as soon as possible. And, but of course, they kids like, damn, you've been gone all this time. They say, damn, but you know what I mean? You've been gone all this time. Like, you know what I'm saying? I say, look, this is my life right now. You know what I'm saying? I say, in order for y'all to, to, to rock Giuseppe's to school, in order for y'all to take Red Fair Gama, in order for y'all to be the best dressed kids at the blackouts, shit like that, this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a sacrifice. I'm sorry, but this this is our life right now. And I threw that $4,000 on that counter. I threw $4,000 on that counter, and I walked away from my kids. I was trying to kill two birds in one stone, actually. So I called my friend for teammate, asked to set up a meeting with Bolo. Bolo is a big rapper out here in Philly. And I've been watching Bolo for a couple of months now, and I really, really want to run with Bolo. I spent some time upstate with Fatima, but she's always been thorough. And her reaching out to me when she came home was one of the things that I needed most. Because when you're behind those walls, you don't have the people out in the world. You actually have the people that's behind the walls with you. And she's proven herself over and over and over again to me. And with this whole Bolo situation, she proves herself one more time. Really fine, I do see you, Bro, what? Yeah, yo, bro. Yo. See, see here. Yeah. Bolo 3K. From the North Philly here, bro. Come from North Philly. I was rapping for about a year now. I got five mixtapes out. I got my own clothing. I got about 22 videos out now in the year. I'm working real hard. And we got track got records. We staying out, man. Girl from Tima, North from the neighborhood. I mean, we came cool. She explained to me, a friend had this reality TV show, this slash movie thing going on, and she write books, so I was like, cool. And she explained everything going on. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm, I'm with it, because, you know, I've been doing my thing. I got a lot going on. How you? I am fine. Let me get a little close to you. 
So I knew he wanted to bust up a mouth from me. Yeah. I watched Bolo over a couple of months over social media, and he was everything, like, he was everything he portrayed himself to be. He was funny, he was articulate, he was smart, he was street smart, and I could tell he got a big heart. What I wanted to do, I just want to expand him, I want to help him expand his brain. I just want to say, stand my hand and put him in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I got this movie, you know what I'm saying, that I'm trying to shoot, and I want to know if you'll be interested in being playing one of the parts, like one of the leads. For sure, for sure, for sure. So, this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to send you the script and let me know what you think. And if you, you know, if you're not feeling it, if you're not feeling the part of whatever, I could tweak anything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? for sure, for sure. Like, I could tweak anything. Yeah. But I literally have a part that's just for you. I've been watching you for a little bit ever since my folks put me on you. Yeah. So. She told me she was playing some type of part of playing though. I'm gonna get money, right? <laughs> no, I don't want to get the robbery. I don't rob people. No, you're most definitely not gonna get the robbery. We got some money for that. Yeah, too old to be robbing people. Nah, but I got you. Like I got you. You won't be playing no sucker. Ain't no, ain't yeah, no yeah, shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talking to Bolo, and he was sharing his story with me. I could see myself in him. I know that sounds crazy, but some of the things that he, he been through are some of the things that I've been through. And we both experienced like pain at the hands of people who we were so down for. I started out with a mob. <laughs> Nothing about myself. Everybody want to be better than me. Everybody want to say, I think I'm the boss. I, was, I don't understand it. When nobody was doing it to I did it. So it was like, how can you be better than the person that don't do I don't work? I started the year. I just had to be good. I just kept doing it. Now I don't think I'm better than you. None of that. I started my own record label, everything. I decided to put these guys in a situation with me. So when they thinking about, when I'm trying to figure it out and notice what's really going on because I'm I'm around the stuff that she was going on. So I can put us in a better position. So we come at the mob and we kick the door. They thinking I'm on some other stuff. But how am I on some other stuff when I'm here every day? I ain't going nowhere. I've been thinking places not nothing new. I've been Driving rapes, I've been doing that shit. I've been been around, I'll be broke, I'll be up, whatever it is. It's life, bro, it's not nothing new. I ain't going to where I've been in my whole life, you know? Like, comfortable in my hood, like, to make me start feeling uncomfortable, that's when you see a lot of envy and stuff with stuff like that, when you see you have a lot of fuck boys around you, it's like, you ain't notice at first. Like, Why? Cause you ain't paying attention to them. And the reason you ain't paying attention is cause you so focused on being an extremist on what you doing, that, you can't even see that shit. But then is it wind up slowing down a little bit and you think you need that little ammunition to boost you back up and pitch you back in the situation. So you're like, damn, they never was gonna boost me up. Never. They just, oh shit. Now this person doing this, this person got clothes around, this person. Instead of pushing one thing, bro, we going bro, this gonna work. I know this gonna work. I know this gonna work. I know how to hustle. I'm a hustle, I'm the trap guy. I, it doesn't mean People think the trap by just selling drugs. No, bro, I can trap anything, bro. Anything on earth, anything you can think about doing, I I can, bro, you, if I, like on local Wall Street, the guy said, sell me this pen. The one boy didn't know how to sell it, do the pen. The other boy said, yo, I got you. He said, yo, write your name. And I don't got a pen. He said, huh? <laughs> That's it's easy. It's that easy, man. You like, it's just, I don't, I don't be understand you when he, they get into the feelings and opinions and all. When all these opinions and everything start going on, everything goes bad. It's never gonna work out. I've, I've been in a, my, my truth moment was when I was behind the wall. When I was behind the wall, when I got, like, next to me, probably 200 people around me at any given moment before I went in. And then when I'm behind the wall, the 29 months I sat, I got six letters and 10 pictures. And those six letters came from kids, which were mine. Those six pictures came from children, which were mine. When the fuck was these other people at? Mad you, I got 110,000 out on the street. I come home, niggas got Grammys and every motherfucking thing. Where's my money at? So when the girl she threw is explaining to me a lot that she been through and a lot that I've been through is kind of similar. So we got the same story. So I can really dig what was really going on. So that's why I decided like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fucking with it. Like I, I, I decided like, I can do it. You feel me? I know I can do it. Dang, I'm the guy with the job. You're not. Do you like my five star view? Seriously, man. No. I 
I'm, 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 I'm a guy for the job. I can do it. I can do whatever. Cool. So I'm going to get ready to get up out here getting some love. Uh, and there, after that conversation, I'm going to get a student that I'll give her a hug off. And I was excited about it. I, I, I figured, like, everything we talked about was, like, a real conversation. So I decided, like, yeah, let's do it, man. And I'm with it. When I walked away from the meeting with Bolo, you know what I'm saying? I felt like I was walking away from a part of me. So I knew that that meeting was right. I knew it was right. And now I'm just looking forward to see what magic we can make on, on screen. Um, I was talking to uh, Mike earlier. He said you were only going to take off for a little bit, but I know I thought it was right. You do a little bit of everything. He said you were going to be in the movie and you're going to be right now. Yeah. Yeah, he said, um, I know we have the open mic tonight, but he said you were leaving tomorrow, so you end up being able to make it by so that we can do like a one camera interview for you. Um, yeah, I can come and do one early. Like, if you, like, a little early, like five or six. Let me give him a call so I can make sure that he can get down there in time. I'll be on the camera if he said he would if I could. And um, I will give you a call right back. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye.